Welcome to Spirit Baby Radio. You are about to join a frequency that will open your mind, expand your heart, and activate your spirit. Thank you for joining Kelly Meehan, Spirit Baby Medium and Master Energy Therapist. Kelly believes in the power of the spirit baby. She speaks with babies in spirit before life, in the womb, and after life. She supports, teaches, and guides others to tune into the intuitive and mystical parts of life for greater wisdom. Join her in meeting your soul baby and build your connection and relationship with deep love and trust. Welcome to Spirit Baby Radio with your host, Spirit Baby Medium, Kelly. Welcome to episode 151, November 11, 2022, Resetting Fertility with Spirit Baby Communication, Thriving Within Spirituality. What is happening? What is going on in your world, in your reality, your internal world, your external world? And I am up here in the beautiful after the rains of past two days in Southern California. It is just magic right now. The sun is shining. I could see it hitting the edges of deep, beautiful, fluffy clouds. So just light emanating everywhere, and it's cool. It's this fall weather really setting in, coming into winter in the next month or two. And things are just, I feel like, in the flow. And so as this episode, Resetting Fertility with Spirit Baby Communication, Thriving Within Spirituality. Are you trying to figure out what is wrong with you? Does your body feel like it works against you? What do you really need? How do you create space to trust your journey with Spirit Baby? I mean, this is huge. This is really huge. And when I say resetting, what does that even mean? Like, how do we feel like we're rebooting, restarting, resetting? It's kind of like when you have a computer, right? We're going to speak in program terms, (laughs) Um, bless my brother's soul. He was the programmer. <laughs> do I will try to do well in this connection, in this conversation. And so in the, you know, the computer, it, it gets full of like programs and old things. And and then maybe you're looking at, wow, look at this thing. It's from so many years ago. And we have to erase them in a sense. We have to delete them. We have to move on, not just keep them in the recycle bin, recycle bin sitting there, but really clearing where our energy is and really coming into present time. And I'm not going to make it sound all easy and beautiful to be in the present time right now. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous and amazing and glorious to really be in a present space. And you know this, you know this, Just you're, you're even just tuning in right now to what that even means in your body, to really be present, to feel your shoulders, Feel your breath, feel your feet. Like right now in this moment, you are here. You are here. And there is something, as all the Buddhas and different philosophies of spirituality really push to us as being in present time. And and as if you have tuned into me over the years and even over the past year, I speak a lot about timelines. We live in parallel universes, so sometimes we feel like we are living in more than just the space. And that's really hard. That is hard on the nervous system. Because in this reality, there are kind of earth laws, right? Um, Even when I say that, it's very flexible. Because you are energetic beings. You have electromagnetic currents. You are mostly light and water. And that's this, this creation of cells of this body. And then you have emotions. You have a mental energy. And you have old stories, new stories, current stories. There's so many stories. And without your mind blowing up right now, you don't have to know every single story. You're an embodiment of a story. You are a book. And it is full of color. It is full of texture. And you are writing this story all the time, unconscious and unconscious ways. Because here's the thing, I'm not here to to tell you that you should be the self-critic, the blamer, the shamer, and get caught up in fear, that you're not a victim to your own creation, but we can be. And there has to be some, I feel like, spiritual, what's the word, Um, accountability. It's okay to be completely disconnected and be accountable for it. I feel like it's not okay if you're just living in disconnection and you don't really care and 
you don't know what that means and maybe you're just tired and well then you have to do something you have to do something to shift and rechange this energy of what is the tone set in and what i find is you know i'm talking a lot about earth ways earth senses parallel realities is that you are more than just one entity and force right now and I would even challenge you if you are looking to reset your fertility and you're just like I don't even fucking know where to begin or how this even looks sit in the silence go outside even if it's cold put layers on maybe find a warmth between the sun and the trees and really earth yourself right earth yourself let yourself feel connected to the earth use your hands you don't have to be barefoot and um Place your hands in the earth, touch the mud and dirt, and really feel that connection with this life force that is rejuvenating, that is literally can suck your inflammation away. So they say, (laughs) this is the earthing study and philosophy of just being connected to another living force that is self-creating, self-healing, moves your cycles of rebirth. And you are the same. And so... As you are outside and you are feeling your own natural reset, let all the stuff flood in your mind. Let all the things come up. Let it just pour out. And even if you're like, oh, man, I suck or what am I doing? I'm tired. I don't know. It's like that's okay to be curious with. That's okay to process. And just let it move through you and see if there's something on the other side of that. So here's the thing. When we when our mental energy is super active, and I can see this in people's energetic fields, and pretty much in every session. I'm like, oh, and it really helps me. I'm not judging. (laughs) I'm not judging you. Oh, look at you, you you dirty mental mind. I'm going, wow, look at how they navigate because your mental energy carries a frequency and I see it. I sense into it and, and it has its own language. And in that, I could see, oh, wow, they really kind of cuddle down and they go deep, they hide or they go into depression, they go into anxiety. And what can we do to coax out that shy, hidden shadow energy that maybe needs just a little bit something different, a different perspective, perspective, perception of light shown upon it? And, of course, we can do that definitely emotionally and mentally. And, and so where your mental energy is going to be a big part of your resetting. And it's not just thinking positive thoughts or doing affirmations. Those can be somewhat helpful but you know running a mental thought over and over will change a little bit but you really have to feel deep into the earth of your body your body is earth how are you nourishing it with water with nutrients with even as i'm saying that i'm like rubbing my belly right now (laughs) i'm getting into it like what is happening is it through the stretching the movement like all parts of your body and Again, you are an embodied being, and I do feel like on this reset, you're not only supporting your mental energy through curiosity, seeing in nature, but once you can get out of the way of your mental energy, then you can see something else. And in this something else, it may not have the same language as your mental thoughts. This something else, I feel, is the oneness of your own consciousness connected to the infinite. <laughs> Say that again. Like, Whoa, where are we going? I mean, it's, again, connected to your consciousness, to the infinite. That is really the true you. When you drop your body, you're like, see you later, hasta la vista. Is that how you say that? Um, (laughs) Moving on. Uh, So your connection now to that vibrant, powerful life force. This is where I really feel is valuable connecting to the heart of embodiment on the conception journey. And I and I get it. I mean, I've worked with a lot of different women that feel like major multiple losses, some still questioning, will they become mother, father, how does that look? And some in just shocking, miraculous ways, feeling their pregnancy in creation, maybe after a very long time or multiple losses or just a lot of intervention, poking and prodding to see where that, you know, perfect alchemy and chemistry is because that's what we do in this reality and so we have to be really open and conscientious to that and i do feel like when there is a lot of i call it poking and prodding in the intervention world of art right um reproductive technologies 
they are absolutely necessary for a small amount of people, not a majority. And we have to really watch that level of consciousness because I feel like the majority becomes then what? Then the whole world becomes intervention fertility. And I don't think that's where we're meant to be. And I get it. Technology is freaking awesome, right? It's like, oh, you know, these new inventions and things come through and let's experiment with them. You know, ovarian rejuvenation is one of them. People have said fabulous things about that. Or there's other holistic less invasive um, energy modalities of light wave therapy, phototherapy, ways to really shift and change the physiological cellular structure through light energy. And um, and there's so much more to say about that. Maybe I'll do a whole other episode. I mean, I'm not super schooled in it. I just know my own experience. But with light wave technologies and therapies that can bring uh, a shift, a shift that then goes, okay, where am I at? What am I doing? And you have to feel good about your embodiment practices and where you're going. Because remember, there's not one size fits all. But why I say feel good about it is because you're doing it. You're doing what you know and can do. And this is a really hard one. It can be very hard when you feel like you've been swindled, bamboozled in your own reality, and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And there's a timeline that says that there's pregnancy. There's a timeline that says that there's birth, holding your baby in your womb, birthing out of your vagina into the world. And then you're going, but it's not here now, Ellie. Like, what do I do with this? And there's a lot you could do with it, or it's really, again, then the surrender to go, this this sucks put it not kindly because it's so much more than that there's deep feelings of grief of anger of confusion of rage even why isn't my baby here i've done everything what else does my baby need from me okay you know i've done the meditation with baby i hear you i hear them um but you're not here i've cleaned and rerouted and reorganized my whole reproductive you know endocrinological endocrine system of healing and, and it's, they're not here and so here's where then it goes well well then what what the hell's happening right and there's again this is where i would say the parallel energies within other realities exist within ancestors and past lives and most people don't have a high level of consciousness for that they don't want to go there they don't understand it because i feel like in this world of high electromagnetic fields through phones through medical intervention of injections, they're creating more of a disconnect with people. And again, it's not to shame you going into interventions and doing things, these things, but they're not without consequence. And can you re- revitalize your energy? Yes, you can, but it really is a person-to-person basis. And that's why when the pandemic happened and all this and people, there's, you know, two sides of war. It's like the injected, the non-injected, and what are we doing? And, you know, a lot of people have died from that injection because that was the that was the calling and the openness of moving into that, that option and choice. And you don't know. That's the thing. You don't know. And this is where I feel like the not knowing part is coming into your own inner awareness to the journey. Like, is this really for me? Yes or no? And not without the persuasion of outside influences, I don't think is healthy. And that's where our electromagnetic fields get short-circuited, get confused, and feel like, oh, gosh, how do I then make this this choice? What then does it look like, especially around a fertility journey? Well, let's say the doctor, the fertility clinic's like, hey, we want to do this. We want to do this, and how does this feel? And let's you know, let's uh, stimulate your follicles. Let's see how that looks. And let's try to get this embryo. And, and it's, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. And there's going to be a lot of unknowns. And I do feel like when we could sink more and more into our bodies and just listen, there's something else there. I really do feel like that. It may, you may not get all the, the quote unquote right answers. And I don't think it's about quote, unquote, the right answers. I feel like it's about listening to every present moment. And there is no madness in the present moment. There can be because remember, as I say, we're living in other timelines. Maybe you're thinking about yesterday. 
Maybe you're thinking about tomorrow. Maybe you're thinking about, whoa, wait, the holidays are coming. What are all these weeks look like? Got a plan, got a plan. And I'm not going to say not to plan your life, but it's, again, we have forgotten how to be in the natural rhythms of our own connection to our own inner compass. And that is really important. And I've met a lot of highly intuitive women, and I can see how there's a skepticism or distrust of their own heart. But then what do you do to re-engage, as I said, the reset? How do you then come back to you? And as I said earlier, I do feel like it begins in nature. You're going to see this more and more over the next year. This is really big. And right now is your time to connect with that deepest part of your own heart space and really looking at what interventions do you absolutely need and what are the other parts that you actually do not need that are twirling you more into darkness and fear. And that's how I see it. And I want you to be challenged by my words. You don't have to take my words. You can do what you want with them. I want you to sit with your own heart self, beyond your mind, beyond your toes, beyond your fingertips, like who is the the infinite part of you? Where is that part that is in creation with this reality? And I, I, I pause here because I want you to take that in. And if you can begin to see more and more that your fertility journey with Spirit Baby begins in that place and everything else is after. So thriving within your own spirituality is a given. You are a spiritual being. Whether you're an atheist or a God lover, it doesn't matter. You are a spiritual being. Spirituality can be defined in so many ways. It's not connected to religion or believing in God. Again, the farmer who believes in the crops is a spiritualist. The Christian or Jew that believes in Jesus, they have levels of spirituality too. And so take a moment if you're on a struggle in this conceiving journey and stop trying to figure out what is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong. Your body is not working against you. It's working with energy. It's working within worlds that that are mysterious. Because I do feel like our minds are so, can be so analytical. And this world of energy in between is not analytical. See, here's the thing. I came into this world not highly analytical, scientific at all. And I laugh in my mind because I took a, I dropped out of a PhD program after two months of, of my master's I completed. I was like, my brain is not wired for that because it didn't feel, it felt like it would take me into statistics. Why? It was like a waste of my time, to be honest, because there's too many variables that would say there's too much energetic involvement in data. I mean, you'd have to really do like long-term 20, 30-year data because your own energy pollutes data, right? I mean, the people, the interaction, the environment, those things nobody thinks about. In, in different studies, but those are those have effects. And so I'm like, I can't do this. This is not me. I came into the world with um, a fight for the left brain uh, intellect, and it was very, I thought it was very damaging because the world said you have to be left-brained. Learn a disabled child. How, how dare you? you? You suck at every subject. You must, there must be something wrong with you. You must be dumb. So, of course, you know, proving, <laughs> proving, my own self and the environment around me wrong, moving into a bachelor's, master's, and almost a PhD. And what was I trying to prove? I was trying to prove that I was smart. That was my ultimate goal. And, of course, it was pushing against whatever I thought that meant or whatever the world around me pressured me into believing. And, of course, decades later realizing, ah, I see, that's right. There's this other level of awareness and connection within the energetic that has the strongest existence over the left brain, over intellect. And I get to see it all the time, every day and every moment, especially working with people. And now I get to see the treasure and the gift inside something that 
is was perceived to be broken, wrong, and not conformed enough into whatever the societal, quote-unquote, norms are. But, hey, here's the thing. I love it. We're in a world now where there's different genders, different um, opinions, different levels of heart awareness, and so now is a good time to be alive, and now is a good time for you to conceive your child or children. And so, as I was saying, your body does not work again, so you are going to sit in nature, drop the body, and connect with something else. And I'm going to leave you in the curiosity with that something else. And in that something else, you can have your own experience. Because sometimes you may have experiences that you can't really articulate. That, to me, is truth. When you enter into the frequency of love, not just as a mental projection, but really into the frequency of love as a full embodiment awareness is absolutely different than a mental thought space. And I have caught some women in the past years. But I'm here and I'm visualizing it. Nope, Mm -mm. nope, nope, you're not. Visualizing what? So what? I just throw thoughts in my head. Great, I'm visualizing. What does that even mean? Is there even energy connected to it? And so I've seen many women, and I've called them out on, you're in your mental energy. I could see it. You're not even in your body. And again, there's no shame or judgment. It's just going, oh, I don't know if I can be in my body. It's not a safe place. It just feels anxious. It's not, it hasn't, it hasn't supported me. And so now, you know, this conception journey, this struggle, guess what? It's pushing you into your body. You're having to go into those places that maybe you don't want to go. And if a a struggling fertility journey doesn't do that, guess what else does that? Disease, sickness, cancer, tumors, autoimmune issues. Our bodies are intelligent. (laughs) I say that with like, hmm. They are intelligent. Um, It doesn't mean you have full control over it because the mind and the body, I do feel like, are separate. They are separate entity and forces of creation. And so the body and the mind want to work together smoothly. But then we look at our culture and the world, especially in America. Why are so many people not only have autoimmune disorders, I think it's maybe one of the highest. Um, And it's not just environmental food and electromagnetic fields. Those will weaken But there's something else behind that story. It's like, why are people in their birth into this reality? Why is it so hard? What's the struggle? In the Americas, right, the new land of energy. And I think there's something in that too, energetically, globally, new energies, new other consciousnesses and realities. And so, yeah, it's too high. It's like, you know, and then, you know, I'm sure we all know somebody who has cancer. I think every other person I meet has some kind of cancer. When we think of cancer, it sounds so scary because it is, it can be, you know, the death of cells. It's like what part of the body and the energy, what, what, what's that connection and communication? And it makes me very curious. Being someone that's an energy and emotional reader, I read my own body of energy. So I get a lot of insight on things. And I could see other people's energies from infants, children, and adults. But then I wonder when somebody gets some really major sickness and diagnosis, like what was the disconnect living in, what, what is that? And again, I can only leave it up to curiosity because maybe there is no answer that's general, right? Kind of like the fertility journey. You don't, maybe there's no general answer and we want that. No, tell me it's the placenta. Tell me it's the cord. Tell me it's something. And maybe doctors and they go, oh, yeah, maybe it's that. And they want to say maybe, but they don't. They're like, well, it could be, and here's a theory. Or or other times it's like, no, this is really, we believe this is it. This is the thing. This this tube is not working. Uh, okay, we'll work from there and see what that looks like. And that could be really beneficial, right? Because you do want to feel like there's there's something in the works. There's something that is in repair, we'll say. Something that's in healing repair in your body. And then you're having to work from there. And so remembering it's okay to try to figure it all out, but drop away that consciousness. And go, you know, begin to feel more and more. How does your body work with you instead of against you? And what do you really need? This is such a big one. What do you need? Not your friend, not the person next to you. 
And why I say that is even what keeps me busy over these many years is that everybody that I meet, there is a different story that is being revealed to me and to them in that moment. And yes, I have a rough template. I like to like look at the body and I like to follow a tiny format. But really, I have times have been challenged by energetic people's fields. And I actually really love that because it keeps me fresh, clean, and in the moment. I don't have a set out template. And I do feel like in a lot of the psychic new age kind of metaphysical world of healing, you go, you go to the Reiki or the energy healing, and I'm not minimizing Reiki, but it's like, is the Reiki practitioner just being all hardcore Reiki, or are they using their own intuition, weaving it in with maybe other elements of nature, crystal elixirs, or herbal stuff? That's the beauty of your individuality, is tuning in to that connection in that way. And so when I'm you know, interacting with the energetic fields of people and spirit baby, it's it's a, it's a very unique experience. And I know many people are like, well, what does that mean? What does a session look like? And I always tell them, listen to my podcast, <laughs> listen to Spirit Baby Radio. You know, we finally made it over here, over 150, which I am in celebration with. And I will have a bigger celebration for that 150, 50th episode uh, as we are passing through that now. And so... You know, coming back to your own inner kind of formula for your conception journey is not going to look the same as someone else's. And I'm deeply sorry if it felt if it feels traumatizing, if you feel unmet, if you feel like you just don't know what else to do. Maybe you're doing a million holistic modalities, you're working with fertility doctors, and then you're just kind of left in the unknown, in the shadow dip into that place. Don't spend time in the shadow, but don't ignore it either. Come into the infiniteness of your own frequency of love. Even if it's every day, you wake up on the bed in the morning before your feet hit the ground, place your hand on your belly and your heart. What are the beautiful, gorgeous things of your heart space today? You are alive. You are here. And you are a creative force. And what does that mean to be a creative force? Ah, there's so much to say about that. You'd have to join me for my seven weeks for that to see how you can go deeper in your own co-creative field and how intricate, detailed, and beautiful it is and how there's life percolating and wanting to move through you, even through those old, icky timelines of lineage and ancestral healing. And then you may ask yourself, then what next? How do you create that space with spirit babies? What is their responsibility in this? Because I'm telling you now, it's the reset of you, right? And it's not really just the reset of you as a vessel, as mother. Um, there's, you know, you could be in partnership where it can be, of course, mother, or it could be father partnership. And that needs its own energy, too, that I've seen many of conception struggles and miscarriage multiple, that it actually has nothing to do with the feminine energy, the woman's energy, the mother's energy, as much as it has to do with the father's energy of his own lineage and his own spiritual unwinding and next connections to his heart's reality. Take a breath. (laughs) That's a big one. And so spirit baby being, this beautiful, infinite possibility, this soul that has a personality that you are not crazy or not cuckoo, baby is in communication with you, you are listening, you are opening, and that's all you can do. You can drop into your body and listen in a way that supports you. And listen with an open heart because our egos can be very powerful in in between energies of information. And your ego may take you on a journey that can be completely false in your connection. And that's not to scare you on your spirit baby wisdom. It's more to to begin to just drop in and go, how am I listening to baby energy? Am I feeling, sensing? Am I auditory tuning in? Am I visual? Or do I just need somebody (laughs) to help me find this attunement and connection? And that can be really, you know, healing and, and supportive. Because I know that when I step into energy circles with you, with others, that I hold in my own frequency a certain sound or tone to connect with baby. That's why I connect with baby. 
or babies or children in between worlds, some not coming and some coming. And there's no promises or guarantees. I don't care who you are. There's no promises and guarantees when we step into the altars of pregnancy. We do it because we are a creative force of love. And we then have to drop in to see then how does it come to us and what does it then look like and how do we then get guided into it deeper and more. And so, spirit baby, this soul is in connection with you in some unwritten, maybe written agreement that says you are going to be going through whatever it is to heal that lineage. And again, all you can do is open with loving arms, but you're not without feeling of, again, grief, anger, suffering, rage, whatever comes up, because you are so done. You're ready to be mother in a deeper, more earth-embodied way. And I feel that for you, and I see that for you. And so I want you to see even this episode as, a, as your own natural reset, that your fertility journey is providing something deeper with opening and healing. And so wherever you are, remember your connection to your heart is pure and available. And remember to come explore your spirit baby communication practices in different ways and how you want to open with it. Remember that baby communicates in different ways too, whether it's music, sounds, writing, feeling, yoga, walking, so motion, wherever you are, really receiving that, letting it all just come together inward into your own heart space. And of course, as always, I wish you lots of love connecting with the journey of Spirit Baby Communication. And I want to thank you for joining episode 151, November 11th, Resetting Fertility with Spirit Baby Communication, Thriving Within Spirituality. Of course, if you like my podcast, please subscribe, leave reviews, I think iTunes and... um, There's a lot of other, what is the other one? It's slipping my mind right now, something with an S. Oh, I'm so not prepared. So join my newsletter as well for a 101 tip meditation video that tells you how to connect with Spirit Baby. I'm also going to announce that there will probably be some December offerings only through the newsletter. You will not see it on Instagram or anywhere else. It'll be a special link. So if you haven't signed up, join to get a special yearly discount that I never offer. Also, please check out my book. It's a journal. It's for conception and pregnancy, and it's called Sacred Communication, a Spirit Baby Journal and Spirit Baby Oracle Cards as well, Soul Answers from Spirit Baby, other beautiful healing tools. And as of right now, I am in the middle of four-week series of Healing After Miscarriage, which is so powerful healing. You can still join at this point by this final second week we begin. And also, next year, 2023, keep an eye out for co-creation, a journey with Spirit Baby for all your conception, healing, energetic needs, as well as the Spirit Baby Academy is going through the six-month certification, enrolling 10 maximum students to take the deeper journey as a Spirit Baby intuitive. This is Spirit Baby Radio. Thank you for joining Kelly in the energy of awareness, love, healing, and soul communication. Please join the next episode at www.soulbabycommunication.com.